Let's first talk about rotational symmetry in terms of a shape. Here we have a square, and we started it at 0 degrees, and it has rotational symmetry at 90 degrees, 180 degrees, as you'll see here in a moment, 270 degrees, and then when it gets back to 360 degrees, which is the same thing as 0 degrees. So this actually has four points of rotational symmetry. It matches up, up actually with our four vertices here and you'll find that with a um, regular polygon. Um, that's a polygon with all the sides being equal or congruent. So if all the sides are congruent you can basically just take that num those number of sides and that's how many points of rotational symmetry it would have. Taking a look at this rectangle, it has a pair of congruent sides, um, so that means it only has two points of rotational symmetry at 0 degrees, we saw here just at 180 degrees, and then back at 360 degrees, which is the same thing as 0 degrees. Not only could a shape have rotational symmetry, but you could also have rotational symmetry around a particular point. Here our point is going to be the origin, and we're going to rotate it 90 degrees counterclockwise. Let's take a closer look at this before moving on. Here we have triangle ABC, and here we have the rotated uh, triangle A prime, B prime, C prime. Now here are the coordinates for each point. Take a moment to look at these and compare how A is related to A, B is related to B prime, and C is related to C prime. What you should notice, maybe not necessarily with A and A prime, but with B and B prime and C and C prime, is that they're essentially the same numbers. The only difference is x, the x and y coordinates have been switched and the first number is now negative. Which follows our rule for rotating a figure uh, 90 degrees counterclockwise around the origin. You have to switch the x and y coordinate and then multiply the new x coordinate by negative 1. We've taken a look at rotating it 90 degrees. Now let's look at rotating it 180 degrees counterclockwise around the origin and see how that rule applies. Here I've placed the coordinates for each of the corresponding parts and notice how they are similar and how they're different. Um, for A we have 1, 1. For A prime, negative 1, 1. B, 2, 1. B prime, negative 2, negative 1. C, 2, 3. C prime, double prime, negative 2, negative 3. And that's because I followed the rule for rotating a figure 180 degrees um, around an, the origin. And that's to multiply both coordinates by negative 1. Let's take a look at one more quick example. Here we have a rectangle. We're going to rotate that first 90 degrees around the origin and then 180 degrees, both counterclockwise. So I've rotated my rectangle here. The original point, the corresponding point here is 2, 1, and you'll notice it's now negative 1, 2. Um, over here it's 6, 1. Up here it's now negative 6, or negative 1, 6. So that's going to be true for all four points of our rectangle. When we've rotated it 180 degrees, now I said counterclockwise before, but counterclockwise 180 degrees is um, the same thing either in either direction, clockwise or counterclockwise. Um, all we've done here though to get this shape is to multiply both coordinates by a negative number. So this uh, point here, which corresponds with this point, has only been multiplied by two negatives. So 2, 1 is now negative 2, negative 1. This point here, 6, 1, is now negative 6, negative 1. And that is true of our other two 
points on the quadrilateral or the rectangle. So, a few things to remember. Rotation around the origin is always counterclockwise. To rotate 90 degrees counterclockwise, that's what that CC is, switch X and Y and multiply the new X by negative 1. And rotating 180 degrees, you're just going to multiply both X and Y by negative 1, but you're not going to switch those coordinates one with one another. They're going to stay the same.